Well, now that we've um, we've got our uh, icosahedron, we can work on a component that will um, increase the the resolution of the triangles, uh, so that we actually get a geodesic sphere. And um, as a template, we can just uh, work with the triangle component that we created previously, because it contains a lot of what we'll need in this new component. So um, what we should do first is save it under a different name. And let's call that um, uh, geodesic projection 2v. Uh, 2v just stands for the uh, the uh, resolution, so that means that uh, this uh, triangle will be bisected here and here and here. Uh, so we have two pieces on each side. What we're building here is actually called a um, uh, a class one. Uh, tessellation. Uh, there's different types of tessellations and uh, this is probably geometry wise this is probably the easiest one. So we don't need the surface we can just uh, delete it and the first thing we need to do is we need to um, uh, create lines between this uh, placement point number four and the three midpoints of the edges. So let's grab a reference line, uh, make sure that make surface from closed loops is not checked and we can uncheck chain as well. 3D snapping uh, needs to be active. And then we can just, well, let's actually use another direction to draw. Let's draw from the placement point to the midpoints. And then on these three uh, three lines, we will place three reference points, and we will um, parameterize the curve parameter, which bas basically controls the position of these points, and call that parameter position zero, just like we did in the other family because at the end we want to move these points down here. And now on these three points we're going to create another three points because we want to project up here. We could of course build a sphere and uh, use the um, host point by intersection method and uh, project a point um, on the uh, intersection of this line and uh, the sphere, but um, this method is actually very accurate and um, let's just use this. So let's create a reference point on this point. Of course, we have identical points again, so we can um, acknowledge that by pressing OK. There's another one here, and another one here. Now we can take these points and drag them up. And um, the offset of these points will later be the equal to the uh, radius of the sphere, so that they will um, actually be exactly on the surface of the sphere. So we need to parameterize the offset and uh, connect it to the sphere radius uh, parameter. And now 
um, we just got a warning that there are identical points in the same place again. That is because the sphere radius um, is zero, uh, was zero in the family we created previously. So let's just um, put in a new value there. Okay. Let's drag these down a little bit. Okay. So I think now you can imagine how this will turn into a portion of the sphere. Um, now the next thing we need to do is um, we need to make triangles here. And we could of course just create some geometry in this family, but um, if we later want to work with different components that maybe have um, emollients or anything like that, um, the best thing would be to put in a component right now. And uh, it just so happens that we have a component ready, um, which is our triangle component. And we can just grab that from, from our sphere here. and load that into our new family. And then we can start placing these components. And remember there's four points in this component and the fourth point needs to be placed uh, on the fourth point of this component. Now, now that we have this, we can later swap out this, uh, this component uh, against another component, which will come in quite handy. Um, now what we still need to do is um, drag these down so they all meet here, which is easily done by setting this value to zero. Then, of course, again, we get the warning that there are identical points in the same place. And, of course, we can now also um, change the value of uh, the offset value of these points here again. If we can grab them, make sure to grab the reference point. Let me drag that up. Um, then we see we now have a nice. Uh, projection of uh, triangles um, that should do the job once we load it into our uh, icosahedron. So let's just quickly check. Um, we've got a parameter for our sphere radius, and that should uh, that should be enough. Now, if we load it into uh, our family like this. Um, it'll probably break. So uh, just as a precaution, I will set this value to the same value we used um, uh, in our other family, 35 meters. Uh, it'll look a bit strange now, but uh, once we load it into the family, I think uh, that won't matter anymore. So let's do this now and load it into our geosphere family. We don't need to place it. The only thing we need to do is we need to select one of these and then click on select all instances in an entire project. 
and swap out the component for the new component. That says regeneration failure here. Let's see. What will happen? Or maybe one of uh, two of these components were placed um, uh, in a faulty way. So let's just place these again. And I always like to use placeholders because they you can work with them faster because they, they have a simple geometry and then you can just uh, swap them out later against something more complex. So let's create an instance here and put that in and then change the type uh, the, the family. Okay. this one as well. Good. Now, this looks very much like a geodesic sphere because it's a geodesic sphere. Um, and if we had a sphere now, you would see that all of the points uh, would actually um, be hosted exactly on the surface. So that's the basic principle of, um, of creating uh, a geodesic uh, projection um, for a geodesic sphere.